Greetings everybody and hope you're having an auspicious day. I'm coming back to you from the beautiful world of Lord Shri Krishna. Now, very many of us have taken for granted the power that stories have to heal us. Um, why is it that we get addicted to the movies? Why is it that Netflix today I think has over 160 million US dollars being poured into making content. The reason is that stories impact us mentally, physically, emotionally. Stories take us out of a limited dimension and a limited frame work into an alternative universe. And the beauty of Indian culture is that our spiritual traditions were very deeply rooted in narrative and storytelling. Now, and when you enter the world of Shri Krishna, which I am with this book, which is, I think, produced from the ISKCON Center, yeah, AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhudeva, Prabhupada, sorry. So when I was entering into this, I realized that like a doctor gives you a prescription to heal your body, and those, those prescriptions usually involve uh, processed chemicals from a lab. In our faith, in the Hindu tradition, stories have actually been prescribed to neutralize karma in the Kali Yuga. This came to me as a real, real revelation. But there's actually a statement that says that those who are self-realized and are looking to escape the narrow confines of human existence benefit immensely when they tune into the divine transcendental pastimes of Shri Krishna. Now Shri Krishna is an incarnation that is actually an answer to the lack of morality, the low quality of religious sentiment in the human world. So I think even at present, if you call him, he's much more readily available to you because he knows that you're struggling with the darkness, with the age of darkness. Obviously, in times of the pandemic, many more of us would have found protection if we were in a regular spiritual practice, either chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, or Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Now, I want to explain why Krishna enjoys such a unique position in the Hindu pantheon of deities. Why is he so potent? So the answer is that all the Vishnu incarnations appearing within this material universe are plenary expansions from Katro Dakasyai Vishnu. Therefore, the business of minimizing the overload of sinful activities on this earth does not belong to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna himself. But when Krishna appears, all the Vishnu expansions join him. So Krishna's different expansions, namely Narayana, the quadruple expansion of Vasudeva, Sankarsana, Pradyumana, and Anitruda, as well as partial plenary expansions like Matsya, the incarnation of a fish, and the Yuga Avatars, incarnations for the millennium and millenniums rather, and the Manvantara of Taras, incarnations associated with the reigns of the Manus, all combine together and appear with the singular body of Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Krishna represents the complete whole and thus all plenary expansions and incarnations always live with him. Okay, so now what I found really interesting, a lot of us are curious about the, the lover relationship with Lord Krishna. How do us humans actually assume that we can be in love with Lord Krishna? And I found a really unapologetic explanation in this book, which really took me by fascination. This Krishna Katha, so basically the Krishna Katha is recommended for all of us to enter into a transcendental state, to imagine the transcendental 
and the limitless, the boundless beauty of the world of Lord Krishna, which exists beyond the limited boundaries of our day-to-day -day material lives. It coexists, but we do not feel it. But when we start listening to the Katha, the Krishna Kathas, uh, whether they're the Bhagavad Gita, which are prescriptions for human existence and social order, law and order, or whether they're the Srimad Bhagavatam, which are the sweet stories of his growing up and the miracles that he produced as a child and his beautiful connections with the gopis and with you know his mother Yashoda. So whether those are the kathas or these are the kathas, Krishna Katha itself has the power to spread all over the world and liberate souls that are suffering from the pangs of material existence. Okay? And now we are getting into his dalliances with the gopis. So he, so the author says Krishna Katha will be very much appealing to the most materialistic persons because Krishna's pastimes with the gopis, the coward girls, are exactly like the loving affairs between the young girls and boys within our material world. Actually, the sex feeling found in human society is not unnatural because the same feelings were there in the original personality of Godhead. The pleasure potency is called Srimati Radharani. The attraction of loving affairs on the basis of the sexual sentiment okay, is the original feature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And we, the conditioned souls, being part and parcel of the Supreme, have such feelings also but they are experienced within a perverted and a minute condition. Therefore, when those who are after sex life in this material world, when they hear about Krishna's pastimes with the gopis, they will relish transcendental pleasure, although it appears to be materialistic. The advantage will be that they will gradually be elevated to the spiritual platform. In the Bhagavatam, it is stated that if one hears the pastimes of Lord Krishna with the gopis from authorities and with an attitude of submission, then he will be promoted to the platform of transcendental loving service to the Lord and the material disease of lust within his heart will be completely vanquished. In other words, such hearing will counteract the material sexual connection. So I'm very curious to know what kind of connections existed between the gopis and Sri Krishna. And I'm also very mystified that when you go to Vrindavan, after the sunset, every form of life abandons the place. The entire temple complex and the surrounding Nidhivan forest and the surrounding area, every window is shut. Nobody dare even look at uh, what is happening in Vrindavan after dark. And this is a daily phenomenon. And I, as a devotee, had gone with my friend and we had actually bought bangles and mehendi as offerings to Radhima, which are kept on a bed. And that room is prepared for Lord Krishna and Radhe to visit every single night. So there's prasad, there's milk, uh, there's a little food. There are these offerings of bangles, bindis, all the sohagan, the signs of the sohagan, and mendi. And when you return in the morning, usually all of it is gone. So there is definitely a sustained engagement from the divine energies of Radha Krishna in Vrindavan. And now this is what I find very eerie also and very fascinating that every monkey, every ant, every bird leaves Vrindavan at sunset as if out of respect for the privacy of the Lord. And they say that the Nidivan trees are the gopis around, embrace around Krishna. All of this comes to life and that there is a living Ras, Ras Leela that happens in Vrindavan the cosmic dance and obviously if if the books are telling us that there was a polarity there was a gender polarity there was a man-woman connect between the gopis and Krishna 
but it was possibly a much more sacred kind of connect right not the material sexual connection some kind of transcendental sexual connection i'm deeply fascinated by what actually happens there and i'm sure all of us are but they say if any human or any creature stays there and tries to witness it they either go blind or they go mad or they go deaf blind and mad so it is a risk to your existence to do it so unless krishna gives you the drishti the vision to enjoy what he is saying doing and his presence so even on the battlefield of the kurukshetra when arjuna was feeling so lost first krishna had to give him the drishti the empowered vision that would allow him to see krishna in his vishwarupa form and we will get into more details of the vishwarupa form because it contained every polarity good bad mad glad wealth poverty greed uh, generosity it contained every polarity that is a part of our universe as we know it if you watch the gaya the spiritual channel gaya it actually tells you that there is a space beyond duality beyond this material existence which is pinched which is hinged on you know the duality of day night health sickness uh, enemies and friendships um so these beyond these dualities you have a spiritual space of nothingness which is where you go when you meditate it's called the source and beyond the source is where lord krishna's vrindavan his vaikuntham is in permanent existence and one has to be very self realized to access that vaikuntham okay and there's a beautiful paragraph where it's described which i'm trying to locate yes yes the lord's abode is described in the bhagavad gita 8th chapter 20th verse where it is stated that there is another eternal nature the spiritual sky which is transcendental to this manifested and non manifested matter the manifested world can be seen in the form of many stars and planetary systems such as the sun and moon but beyond this there is a non manifested portion which is not approachable by anyone in this body and beyond that non manifested matter is the spiritual kingdom that kingdom is described in the bhagavad gita as supreme and eternal never to be annihilated the material nature is subject to repeated creation and annihilation but that part the spiritual nature remains as it is eternally The supreme abode of the personality of Godhead Krishna is also described in the Brahma Samhita as the abode of Chintamani that abode of Lord Krishna known as Goloka Vrindavana is full of palaces made of touch stone there the trees are called desire trees and the cows are called surubi the lord is served there by hundreds and thousands of goddesses of fortune his name is govinda the primeval lord and he is the cause of all causes there the lord plays his flute his eyes are like lotus petals and the color of his body is like that of a beautiful blue cloud on his head is a peacock feather He is so attractive that he excels thousands of cupids. Lord Krishna gives only a little hint in the Gita of this personal abode which is the supermost planet in the spiritual kingdom. But in Shrimad Bhagavatam Krishna actually appears with all his paraphernalia and demonstrates his activities in Vrindavana. Then at Mathura and then at Dwarka. the subject matter of this book will reveal all these wondrous activities
Now remember, as we get into the activities, we have to learn to apply Krishna's magic in the post-pandemic world. In the last video, I instructed us to chant Radhe Radhe because Radhe's name is a hundred times the power of Krishna's name and this is something he himself has expressed. And remember that the potency of wealth, of prosperity comes from Sri Lakshmi. Sri Lakshmi is Radha. We are all struggling right now with an economy that's on very uneven footing, especially in India where the second wave had really undermined a lot of our normalization processes. And therefore, keep chanting Radhe, Radhe, Sham Milade, because that takes care of the Radhe, Radhe vibration that brings everything positive and auspicious uh, into your world. I mean, there's actually a statement here saying that the listening of the Krishna Kathas is the antidote to the inauspiciousness of the Kalyug. And hence, so is the name Radhe Radhe. It's a, it's a medicine against all the instability and the uncertainty and the economic instability of the times that we're living in. So as we meet for these Krishna and transcendental experience sh um, sharings, keep in mind that even the listening of this is going to help you tremendously move into a transcendental state of mind. And on that note, I exit this video Blessings from the transcendental world, the beautiful world of Lord Shri Krishna, Radhe Radhe Sham Milade.